a good little start to it. Uh, what actually got you into voice acting? Uh, I had no other life skills. <laughs> I had zero life skills. That's all I can do with myself. No, um, I, you know, I, I, I reserve that, um, that definition for other people who actually are voice actors. I don't really do that a lot. Um, I've done Woods. I've done uh, stuff for Yakuza. You know, like in Doom, but that's it. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm actually more of a straight up uh, on camera guy. Uh, Woods happened, you know, it was a, it's just a series of good events. You know, I actually went in to test the technology for performance capture and they just liked me and I stuck. It's all happened. It that's just simple. Like right, place, right guy, right place, right time. Okay. That's all it was. And I got to build, uh, I got the privilege of building a, an, an absolutely iconic character that is uh, very proud of that, very happy with it. I mean, how much hands-on did you actually have molding that character? They gave me a tremendous amount of, uh, of uh, input. Um, you know, to the point where halfway through Black Ops 1, I was just giving carte blanche to, you know, to change the, the ad lib and and this is this is kind of been true for like uh, Nolan North and those guys, Nolan North and uh, Trey, uh, Troy Baker. You know, they're just given such leeway. To, to, once you start riffing, especially what they do, because th those guys are really they're 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 they're, they're just real good pros. I, I've been with them. They're they're amazing to to work with. Um, but I was given the 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 freedom to just input, you know, or reject lines. I'm not saying that I would not. This is not even close to what this character would say in this conditions. So after a while, it's, those, all those adjustments were really working in the edits. So the, the, you know, the word came down from the boss that, okay, let him run. And then Black Ops 2, it got to the point where they, I had, they sent me a script and then I would just go over it and I would start writing for it. They, I come in two days a week, they send the writer's script and I just woodsified it. You know, all that, you know, and all that stuff was just kind of manufacturing, like, you know, there's batshit, where are my smokes? You know, that stuff comes out, where does that come from? You know, so when that stuff came up, I would just keep track of it and write it down. So they hired me to write um, all the Woods dialogue for Black Ops 2 and some of, um, in a lot of the, a lot of the scenes, like with um, Rich McDonald, who we had just finished doing SEAL Patrol together. So he and I were already buddies. And then he came in, we got him the audition and he just blew, he just blew him out of the water. So he got, he was, he was a great, um, David, uh, David Mason. And, um, yeah, he was, you know, so he, he and I were already connected. So I, I knew how to write for him. And so I was in black ops Four, same thing. Dave brought me on, Dave Anthony brought me on and he, uh, said, look at here, here's what we need. He sent an email at eight in the morning and said, we need this band a day. And I would write, a, I wrote all this, the specials HQ stuff. I wrote most of the, anything Woods is in, I wrote all that. When actually in the booth, I, I know you said you've been writing, you know, uh, before to, to actually build him up. While in the booth, was there any riffs, any lines that you've just, that you improvised that made it into the actual final cut that stands out to you? Well, it mostly, most of my work was done live action. So performance captures when you capture words, voice, and, and uh, body at once. Uh, I didn't do, a, I did not do a lot in the booth per se. I mean, I, you, you had your battle chatter, you know, the stuff, the, you know, the screaming, that stuff you do in the booth and they kind of plug it in throughout, especially when they started to use uh, words more for the um, uh, online platforms and, and the hand games. Uh, but I, I had a bit, predominantly my work was done with other actors and magic when you're working with other really talented people, just the best stuff happens. Like we're working with Kamar in Menendez, every, almost every scene we had together, something happened. And with same with Rich McDonald, we just kind of, kind of flow with each other. Then I had such great relationships. They call our, um, our utility guys, Andrew Hawks, Jeremy Dunn. These guys were, and Jeremy Dunn's like a legend in the business. He's just in everything. He's, he's a mocap actor, so he doesn't really get much uh, voice time, but he's, he's every, you know, he's, he's more of a stuntman. So he, uh, he's in everything, and we had a great relationship. So having these great relationships, Emerson Brooks, who went on to have a great career with uh, on The Last Ship and a few other movies, 
great. He was Bowman. He's the original Bowman. He and I were had a great relationship on set. So that creates that comfort level, creates a a trust, and then you just kind of you kind of bounce off of each other, you know. And by the time it, you know, by the time we got into Black Ops Two and and even Black Ops One, I had such <laughs> I, just, I was kind of irreverent at the time, so I just let shit rip, you know. I let it rip, and if it's good, it sticks. If it's not, you just move on, you know. Um, yeah. So the in the booth itself. Um, when I work with Dave Anthony, uh, it, it becomes it, it becomes just an ongoing ball busting session. You know, we just go through every line. You know, it's, it, it sucks. It doesn't work. Who who wrote this shit? He goes, "You did, mate. I didn't write this one. You wrote." You know, and it gets and then they capture some of that. It's just an it's a banter. So there's a lot of that, but it's mostly about the people you're you're talking to in the moment. So if Dave wasn't there, kind of punching and pulling and pinching and prod and we probably would have gotten wouldn't wouldn't have the kind of energy we have from the woods character so yeah does that answer the question I'm yeah yeah sure. yeah yeah even if it doesn't that, it does you know that's a rambling answer you'd rather have too much than too little that i've learned you know um i'm probably like 40 yeah. episodes deep and i've learned that i'd rather somebody riff on than than just look at you blankly and go no okay, yes here we go favorite mission uh, when it comes to Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2, because Black Ops 4 obviously didn't have a campaign, what was your standout missions, in your opinion? Yes. Fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's, and I, this is a stock answer, and I, and I, I, can't, I can't really deviate from it because it would be a, a, be a lie. Look at, for me, it's been one continuous story. It, 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 like Black Ops One never ended for me. It kept it rolled on because we rolled from Black Ops One right to Black Ops Two. That was four years of my life, and that character was ongoing. And then there's a small break in Black Ops Three, and then Black Ops Four. That was not, so basically for me the story had it's not one it's not one scene. It's like a series of you know Black Ops Four. We really tried to tie the universe together. One of our goals was to kind of create a, a sort of an overall narrative that where everything makes sense, right? So um, I think if I had to pick one, probably the end scene would where uh, Dave meets his son. You know, hey, Al, this is Dave. Dave, this is your dad. <laughs> you know, and that was just, there was just this kind of sweet, but Woods type of like, this is Woods kind of being a, you know, this is his kind of vulnerability. This is him, like, hey, Dave, you know, this is Al, Al, this is your dad. <laughs> you know, like, it's just it's just a great Woods moment. And then rolling off the, that that great line, you know, there's batshit, where are my swim? Oh, you, you two like a couple of fucking broads, work this shit out in your own time. There's batshit, that, that was all just in the moment, man. So right, that scene was fun. We we worked really hard on trying to figure out how to make that scene fly, and that scene's actually on my it's on my channel. All this stuff's on my YouTube channel. Like how I got the job. It's a long video on that. And the scene here, this fa favorite ending with Dave, you know, Mason meets his kid again. That's it shows the behind the scenes stuff on that. What we did, it's pretty great. Talking about that specific scene, you know, at the end of Black Ops Two, it takes yeah. me right back. You know, just even just sitting here, you know, uh, just to break professionality for a little bit this is fucking insane i i, <laughs> I grew up with you guys you know yeah, uh, i yeah, i played yeah, black ops yeah. one and two religiously yeah. and that was my thing and uh to be able to sit here with you today uh is is an honor oh. first of all no oh, man um but no, i take that as a compliment thank you thank you how do you feel like like you know from me to you from you to me how do you feel knowing you became the voice and you've molded this character to be one of the biggest characters in, I'd say, Call of Duty history, at least in my opinion. Yeah, 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 I agree. I agree. How does that make you feel? Other people do too. There's a lot of people <laughs> agree. With me. Yeah, this is how I look at it. Is is that it's it's a um, it's a privilege, and I I don't want to do this horseshit actor thing. I think you know, no, no, man. I it, it's it has given me access to things that. An average, you know, average Joe would not get a guy like me. I'm a, you know, I'm a small town guy from Western Mass. I grew up on an app, you know, place with apple trees and a junkyard. I mean, I got, I'm just a blue collar kid from Western Mass. 
And because of this freaking game, I've been I've been in Afghanistan. I've been all, I've been I've been on nuclear submarines, aircraft carriers. I've you know I've flown in military planes across Chinese, being painted by Chinese radar. I mean, I've been in situations you know due to this game that are remarkable. I've met people who are remarkable. So I take none of it for. I've made friendships that will be my, a lifetime of friendships. So I take none of that for granted. It's it's given me a life that. Uh, it's extraordinary and it, it's it's a blessing that's why i'm always uh really interested in talking to people like yourself you know because one of the things i felt strongly about is that the you know the business model they have to address the 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 large influencers the youtubers the gamers so the big names they all get brought in but but who buys the game they they all get it for free who buys it's like it's the kid who has 18 followers on YouTube. They're spending a hundred bucks to buy this game. And I wanted to be able to provide them with some access. I want to provide them with some connection to it. That's always been the mission, you know, through the YouTube channel, through Twitter, through the Instagram, is to give, give lesser, lesser visible, lesser known entities an opportunity to get inside the game, inside the, 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 the magic curtain, so to speak. So it, it's, a, it's an absolute privilege to do that. And it's a responsibility that I don't take lightly because I have, you know, I got, I got, what, almost 11 years, 12 years doing this now. And some amazing things have happened. And I, I just am I'm grateful for it. I mean, you, you know, tapping into what you were saying, you got your little corner, as you call it, uh, you know. Uh, corner. Yeah, in, in your YouTube. And seeing the level of connection you have with people that grew up like myself watching your stuff and playing with your characters and stuff it really is nice to have that little peek behind the curtain you know what i mean and yeah. it's uh not many people do it a lot of people have been doing that a lot more recently with the likes of covid happening and, and more connection online but yeah yeah seems like you've been doing it for for a little bit and it's, it's great to see you know well it's interesting is that there are waves of like there's I had a wave of fans we did a lot of twitter stuff we had this called the, the hunters and I would do these uh, intellectual scavenger hunts back in like, 2015, where I kind of give somebody a mission here. How do you find this? And, and teaching kids how to use logic. And because I saw that a lot of kids were falling behind with school because they didn't know how to think. Schools have, have removed the idea of challenge and thought just to get. So I started I called the hunters, and we had these challenges, and the winner gets something. And then we transitioned into a more um, visual medium. And it really is the community is is amazing. I might the community that has generated around this. And there's a lot of these guys go on to be really successful in their life. And I really it makes me feel good about it when they say, you know, you helped me get here. Thank you for that. You know, so to, to think that this character that this this you know this swearing gruff, you know, bombastic guy, come up, somehow got some gave some kid the inspiration to get through college or gave them the inspiration to do something different with their life it changed their trajectory that to me is an amazing side effect and i and i i really you know i really i kind of want to preserve that as best i can so the you know, sergeant's corner community is a big deal because you go on it really is a nurturing and everybody's great everybody mm. gets on and we get very few trolls and the ones that do we try to turn them yeah, come on, man. Be part of it. Don't do this. Be, and just and it's surprising how some just you know you don't you don't give them any to fight against. And they, they just they just come back and want to join in because there's nobody beating you up, you know. And that's what that's what I love about the community. Yeah, I know it's um you, you know I I, I want to ask this because uh, I've been curious on, on the, your stance on it. Uh, because you are so connected to the characters, because you are so loving with the community around that character. Uh, I was really sad to see uh when cold war came out as you know you weren't yeah. cast as as frank woods yeah. and yeah uh the the actor did an amazing job but just didn't there's something that you bring to the character yeah. no, no hate to them at all but there is something that you have brought uh maybe that is the love and it is the passion behind that um yeah it just can't be replicated with you know with somebody else but how did you find out about that how did you feel about that um specifically to to lighten it up the comment, like, I'm a goddamn fucking onion. Like, what, where did, what is that? So basically, it's, it's, when I first heard, like, um, the Warzone stuff, I, and I heard my voice, I go, 
are they using my ad? Cause then I'm thinking money. Are they using my a- assets? Are they using my assets again? Cause they, they sent me a, they sent me a contract that was kind of ridiculous. And when we said, no, and my manager didn't handle it well. So, and then I started to hear this, I go, did they just take my assets and use them? And then I found out, no, they, they actually brought somebody who imitated my voice. And, and I went, well, that's odd if you, you know, and the imitation is something, but it's not, it's not the quality of the rasp or the, but it's understanding why I say a line. And it's also knowing that my connection to the lines are that I fucking wrote most of them. So it's, it's my dial. See, when you talk to me, I talk like Woods. Woods and I, we're the, we're the same guy, except I don't kill people. So you're, I, would, I wish they had let the guy, the actor, build his own version of, of the character, right? And I'd give him the freedom to make something. Have him come in and try to replace me, how to, to, to imitate me. That was like, that's death for an actor. I mean, it's, I, you know, I, you can't, you, you, I've done that. I've done, it's called voice matching, but the performance is never as good as, you know, with George Clooney and I, I tried to do Clooney in um, Three Kings. You know, I, I, I voice matched him some sent, sent, we call it, sent, you sanitize things. And it's not, just not as good because it's, you're not in the moment. It's not the character. And you just imi- you're trying to emulate a voice and imitate it. So you're not really thinking about, you know, the depth of what's going on. And then it's, then there's also you're missing my 11 years of, you know, I invented this guy. I was part of like, it was Sergeant Frank Barnes. And I was at, that was at the beginning of the Genesis. So he's, he's really built, he's literally built on my infrastructure, on my, on my frame. And he's built to my, it was my body, my face up. There was using for 11 years. So those assets were in play. And, and I just think that my only, my only issue is that the lost opportunity, like that onion line, it, I get it. You're ripping Shrek off, you know, it's, it's a, it's low hanging fruit. Is that what well, it was? Shrek? Yeah. The Shrek had the whole thing about onions. The layer like thing. Onions. I got layers, hmm. you know, a donkey. I'm an onion. I got layers. So they're ripping Shrek off, right? Now, okay. the thing is, thing is, if you're gonna rip, if if I was gonna do that line, and they, they're gonna rip Shrek off, I would have done Shrek's thing. Listen, donkey, I'm an onion. You know, you, it, it's like that's that's where the, the that's where the disconnect is. I would have taken it and applied a, a different kind of humor, a little more of myself to it. And there's a lot of opportunities here they miss, like that whole scene is a replication of the Weaver scene from Black Ops 1. The Weaver's gone dark, you know? And that's it. So why not, if I, was, if I was there and I was with the team, hey, why don't we just throw back to Black Ops 1 here and just, you know, hey, remember Weaver? You, know, you, you could have done a shout out to Black Ops 1. You could have made connective tissue throughout the whole franchise, right? And that's where I thought the, the loss was that the fans never got to see the stories tied together. And by the time they made Black Ops is it, uh, Cold War, most of the writing staff was gone. It's all new guys. So the, the, the history, the, the connection to Black Ops 1, all that story, all that canon was left somewhere else. And I don't think, and Raven was doing it. So it wasn't even Treyarch anymore. So they, they, they missed the opportunity of tying the whole universe, the Black Ops universe together. And that's where I feel bad for you guys because it would have been great to see. And there's so many three, there's so many opportunities to throw it around. You know, there's so many, and the Mason relationship was much different in this one too. Yeah, but the Mason, like you know, Sam is he's a he's, you know he's a strong character. He's got he's kind of a you know ball buster. But there's this there's this inside of that there's this kind of um, a little bit there's a thing about respect it, it's just it's just something that you pick up on it's, it's a very athletic thing and it's in the military when you spend time around soldiers you see it a lot like you you trust this guy with your life you you feel this guy not only will he say he has your back but you know he has his skills to actually have your back so so that that's really the issues for me is that i thought we really could have done a lot more had i had the uh had they given me the, the shot at the job so this, I am so grateful for what they look what they let me do. I did, I, I could never be um, bitter about it, and, and I'm, gratitude is endless for me. 
at the same time, wow, we could have done some really cool shit had you, you know, brought me or just call me into it, you know, for a consultation. Like if the actor had called me up and said, hey, you know, I'm taking over the park. Can you give me these? Oh, sure. And I'll talk to you about it. No problem. But no one reached out. Nobody came out and said, hey, you know, hey, let's let's get let's get the guy who's been who's been doing it for 11 years. Maybe he can give us some insight and help us, you know, continuity wise with the character. Have you talked to him after the fact at all about that? I I reached out many times. I uh, invited him on the show, and he's hey, like, I know he's a musician. I'm a musician. Hey man, let's let's put a band together and do a uh, you know good kind of tour. I got some, got some great Call of Duty um, spoof songs. I do. You know, have you seen that the Christmas songs and things that I do? You know, I got actual. I got like a half dozen songs like Call of Duty songs. That, you know, we have. You know, it's just anyways. I go, oh, let's do something. The two woods, we fucking kill it together. Never heard from the guy. And then, yeah, and then he, same thing with uh, Bruce, the guy who plays Adler. I knew him in New York 30 years ago, and he was coming on the show. And all of a sudden, he goes, uh, he canceled like the, the, like the same day and never heard back from the guy. So I don't know what that's about. That's disappointing, but I really do think the thought of uh, the duo of Woods as a musical okay, group, on, that's it's fucking woods, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been great. And, and, and it would have took the pressure. I would have, you know, I could have took all that pressure off of him. I could have introduced him to the world and got him set up. And he never, he never, he never replied to me. I, I was still, I was still reaching out to him like last summer. Hey, let's, hey, man, let's do a show. Let's do something together. Come on the show with, you know, never heard back. Is, is he just, do you know what he's doing at the minute? Is he just like no swamped? No? I, okay. You have no, I, I don't know. I, I don't know his, 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 working, his work history. I don't think he's done a lot in, in film and television. I really hope this duo Woods musical group. What would it be called though? Woods. There's the, there's the fucking one word answers again. All right. <laughs> well, what else would you call it? You know? Um, but no. It, Not an onion? I mean, come on. <laughs> the the layered onions, uh, I think. Layered, sure. Layered? Uh, no, no fucking. Woods is not an onion, man. <laughs> what is he? The fucking T-bone steak. Uh, but during your time as Woods, um, obviously with production, things get cut, things get altered, changed uh, before initial release. Obviously, adhering to uh, NDAs and stuff, uh, was there any elements of the game that was scrapped that you were probably most looking forward to being a part of during your time? Uh, we had, I think, I think we shot seven endings for Black Ops 2. And they only have three, right? Uh, some of them were strange. Some of them, I'm glad we didn't get rid of. There was one or two that were really kind of cool. Um, but no, man, they, the way they shoot it, it's not a linear, or even, even in, in, it's not like a film or a TV show. Um, they do, it. You know, they have like seven people, they have like, different guys working on levels called levels and then i may be in one level and not in another level and they'll capture some assets and they got to build some stuff and they see what they're missing and then we'll go back and we'll shoot a scene or we'll do some temporary dialogue do some film so it really is you know it kind of this a sort of a, an, an evolution into the into a, a final product and again we've i've i've shot scenes like that uh that great scene, uh, you can't kill me. We shot that a couple times. You know, we had mm -hmm. to go back and capture a few because they didn't. Okay, this performance worked, but that performance didn't. We'll still go back and get that. So there's a lot of um, you know they they have a lot of freedom because it's they have a lot of freedom because it's all animation. You know, so they can change things and manipulate it. But at the same time, if you know, it, so it's it's not it's not a linear process by any means. But they do have a dead date, so we we have to be captured and you know in the books by you know, September 9 to get it, to release the game. So that's the only thing you have a hard out and when everything's gotta be done. But it's not linear, man. There's no linear. You know, okay. we shot, I and mean, we shot the commercial, for Black Ops 2, we shot the commercial first. You know, that's the first <laughs> thing I did for Black Ops 2, you know. Besides the fact that I'm still alive, none of this surprises me. That we shot that, you know, that, that was February of 2012, I think it was. And then we, then we started yeah and that was for the nba uh no for the finals of the sweet 16. and then you know we we didn't work again for a month and it was just and it's just that we pile drive for the next three months to wrap it up uh what are the key things you have taken away as your time with woods 
I could, I could talk for an hour on this. Go to for be it. more specific, I mean, there's, there's again the I can go spin back to this the just the access. It's what is what it's allowed me to do with my life. The things the access has given me, um, the the ability to meet people. I mean, I you know, there's a hundred, two hundred million people in the world who know who Woods is. So when you meet them, you know, I, it's an in, have instant friends everywhere. You know, which is what what a gift, right? To be like, I'm talking to you. You know, I'm talking to you now. What a gift for me. Yeah, yeah, I've done a lot of things. I've been on TV, commercials, and been in films. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it allows me to connect to people. I, I would never meet you if I wasn't Woods, right? So True. I get to meet you. You got great fucking pink glasses. You got <laughs> pink hair. You got black nails. What a cool looking fucking dude you are. You know? That's, that's getting that's clipped. Cool. That's getting clipped and that's putting everywhere on every social media. Put it, man. I got it. You're a cool looking dude. Thanks, but that's sir. my point. It's, it's, it's what it's, it's what it has given my life at, you know, possibilities. And you can't replace that.